Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for watching the brand new media show today. Today, we'll be talking on our Living Healthy series, part two of how to beat diabetes. And we have senior physician, Dr. Hiramalani Sheshadri from Singapore with us today. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Brenda. Here's wishing everyone a very good evening from Singapore. I'm told we don't have all the time in the world. So today it's not going to be really a chat, but a Ted Oid uh, talk, shall we say? Yes. So first of all, I want to request all of you who are watching to please watch part one of this talk, because that's where we've covered a lot about what exactly causes type two diabetes and what numbers you need to know and so on, which I'm not going to repeat now here in this talk. And an important warning, if you're diabetic and you're on medication, and after watching this show, if you feel like changing your diet or adding some supplements, please don't jump the gun and do it on your own. You must get back to your doctor, discuss it with him or her, then take your doctor's guidance and then make the change. Okay, so now let's dive into the subject. I'll begin by recounting our own family's brush with type 2 diabetes. This was in the early 1990s. My husband, also a medical doctor, in fact, one of India's top shot psychiatrists, was losing a lot of weight. And both of us were worried. We didn't want it to be the big C, you know, C A and C E R. And so when the checkup showed that it was only diabetes, we were like relieved, oh, cause for thanksgiving and celebration. But then the sugars were high, very, very high. Now I knew that if we went to a diabetologist, he would end up with uh, getting a lot of medication and even maybe insulin because the end thing then was, this was evidence-based then, that it, one had to have tight control of blood sugar. Well-meaning, of course, because they wanted to prevent complications like heart attack, stroke, kidney problems, and so on. So the view then was tight blood sugar control. Now, as a physician, I was seeing the flip side of it. Almost every day, I would see somebody brought in feeling weak, tired, woozy, um, maybe slurred, slurred speech, or just passing out, or even unconscious because of low sugar. And I knew this. Of course, high sugar is bad, but low sugar is worse. It could tip you onto a heart attack or a stroke. And I certainly didn't want my husband to go in for low sugar. So what did we do? Um, I decided to treat my spouse. Not the right thing to do, but it just turned out right for us. Now, while we're on low sugar, I may as well tell you the symptoms of low blood sugar, which is very important. Any diabetic on medication must know these. If you feel very hungry, very tired, uh, you feel sort of shaky tremors in your hands, or you feel palpitation, or you break out into sweat, or you feel your speech gets slurred once in a way, or you feel wobbly on your feet, or very sleepy, or you pass out, or you have fits, get back to your doctor because these could be clues that you're having a low blood sugar. Or early morning headaches, and you find that your, your night dress is all drenched in sweat, or if you've had nightmares at night, this could also be due to low sugar. And if you check it at home and you find it 70 milligrams or less, that's again low. So get to your doctor. Okay, so then what did we do? We were vegetarian already. But then maybe we were eating too many carbs and maybe the wrong kind of fats, not exercising enough. So I made sure that all this was corrected. And of course, we had a very positive mental attitude. And then a friend walked in not a doctor, just a friend, and he introduced us to some world-class nutritional supplements, just micronutrients. Now, in medical college, they don't teach us much about nutrition, nothing at all about nutritional supplements. 
but I had the good sense to have an open mind. So I read up and I found that they, they sounded promising. There was no risk of low sugar, running into low blood sugar, and no side effects to talk about. So why not? Give it a try. Maybe try it for six months. Thank God we decided on that. It's 25 years now. We never looked back. That's Today, my husband is a fine, on God's grace, above all. His bad cholesterol is down, good cholesterol is up. At diagnosis, he had a small little spot in the retina. That's reversed. Uh, he had a bit of protein in the urine at onset. That's reversed. So it's worked for us. Okay? Okay. So what did we take? What were these supplements that we took? And why and how did they work? That's the first question. For that, we have to first look at what causes type 2 diabetes. It's not that you don't have insulin. In fact, you have a lot of insulin circulating, but it doesn't work. It's called insulin resistance. You see? So you have insulin resistance. And because of that, the blood sugars are high. Say so it's like you have an infection, and because of the infection, you have a fever. Right? So when that happens, you don't just take Tylenol for the fever. You, take, you treat the infection as well, right? Right. Same way, in type 2 diabetes, it's not enough if you just bring the blood sugar down with tablets. You need to address the insulin resistance. And that was what the food and food supplements were doing. So now let's see what supplements did we take. Now in uh, 2020, 25 years on, 25 plus years on, there's a lot more evidence okay, uh, to say that these supplements were. And I'll give you a list of nine classes of supplements, nine is, by the way, the number of the divine, that work. And there's enough evidence for it. Okay, I've requested Brenda to put up a list on the screens so that you all can, if you're interested, Google it. You know, these are fancy names. Uh, right. the scientific names. Google it and get more information. We will, show that on the, we will show that on the screen if they would like to write it down. It will be on the okay. screen for a while. Yes. One is Genistein. Genistein is an isoflavone, which we got along with the, it comes in soy protein. Okay, so we were on to a very good protein powder from non-GMO soy, and it came with it. And Genistein today we know is very good for type 2 diabetes, for, uh, for controlling sugar. The omega-3 fatty acids, I'm sure you've heard of that. They bring down uh, your uh, bad cholesterol. They improve your good cholesterol. They're good for the brain, for the eyes, for the heart. They reduce inflammation. And they're good for insulin resistance. And they also help you lose weight. Of course, my husband was losing weight on the outside, but maybe there was visceral fat. And in America... Obesity or being overweight is a big problem that tips you on into diabetes. 68% of American adults today are overweight because the more fat tissue you have, the less the insulin can work. So more insulin resistance. Then there's another good fat called alpha lipoic acid, ALA. This again is good for the brain, good for the nerves, helps you lose weight, helps in insulin resistance, and so on. All the vitamins, especially vitamin C, vitamin E, they work together, and vitamin D. After vitamins comes minerals, okay? You have to make sure that there's enough chromium, magnesium, and selenium. We all know of calcium and iron, of course, but these three are very important in type 2 diabetes control for insulin resistance. There's a very important term called antioxidants, which you must have heard of. But in this category, there are many, many with fancy names like catechins, that's rich in, it's there in cocoa. That's why dark chocolate, they say, is good for diabetes, type 2 diabetes. Okay? Then you have anthocyanins, the colors in all the fruits and vegetables. They say color your plate, right, these days? So anthocyanins are very good. And there's hesperidin, isothiocyanates, flavonoids, lutein, lycopene. Okay, I won't go on with these names because you can read up yourself. The list will be there on the screen. 
then a very important thing is you must have heard of this word prebiotic. Okay? And what's prebio prebiotic? This is food that we don't digest, we don't absorb. But this is very important for our living buddies. We have some living neighbors. Did you know that? Gut bacteria. And these are very, these bacteria, helpful bacteria, very important in type 2 diabetes. Okay? okay. Because the prebiotics that's not digested by us. Okay. Now, if supplements are so useful, why isn't everyone talking about it? Pertinent question. Okay. Now, in medicine, change always happens very slowly unless big pharma is interested in it. Okay? If big pharma is in it, there's, that means there's a lot of money to be made, and then you'll have it all over BBC and CNN and Time magazine and everywhere. Okay? But in, in just food and food supplements, unfortunately, there is no big money to be made, and so the change is very slow. All these supplements do not find a mention in textbooks or in the big associations because they have to be politically correct, okay? And, uh, but those who use it and have benefited from it or have a special interest in this area and have researched it, they know about it, okay? And I know from 25 years of personal experience in our own family and with a lot of our patients who benefited. Okay, so practically, what can you do? If you're interested in starting on supplements, do your own research and then get back to your doctor. Don't just start them on your own. I don't want you to run into low sugar. Let your doctor guide you on this. Okay. Now, what about food itself? This is what Brenda has been asking. Okay. Yes. Now, speaking for myself, I usually suggest a lacto-vegetarian diet. Lacto because we use a lot of yogurt in India and a vegetarian diet. But I'm on the other side of the world. Let's see what happens in America. And what I'm told is, when a, a patient is diagnosed to have diabetes in the US, usually the doctor will put them on the diet recommended by the American Diabetes Association. Fair enough. Okay. Now this diet apparently is a reflection of the SAD diet. Now what is SAD diet, S-A-D? Standard American diet, okay? Which means it has meat, it has uh, eggs, it has fish, it has grains, and, uh, no, legumes, lentils, pulses, fruits, nuts, okay? But definitely the, uh, the processed meats, they ask you to cut out, okay? And they say cut take all the processed meat. But the portions are all brought down because the calories have to come down, right? So when the portions come down, most people, it's okay, but for many people, when they eat, they don't feel full. They don't feel they've eaten, okay? Plus, you're put on medication, which brings your sugar down. So you're hungry. And you can't eat because you have to follow the diet. And so you're stressed out. And when you're stressed out, the stress hormones come out and your sugar goes up. So this happens for a few weeks. By the time you go for your checkup, maybe your sugar's up again. And then the doctor said, oh, I have to increase your medication. So it's a vicious cycle. Now, is there a way out of this? Now, I must, uh, I would happy, be happy to recommend a couple of other physicians who think like me in the USA. There's a whole group. It's called the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. There are 9,000 doctors as members, 9,000 of them. And they have been able to help any number of diabetics virtually reverse their disease. And they follow a vegan diet. Yes, vegan. There are plenty to change. No pain, no gain. Okay? But it's worth it because if you can get back your health and, you know, reduce your medication, get off injections, it's absolutely worth it. And there are 120,000 ordinary people who are also members of this organization and just about $20 a year or something to join. If you want a regular program, a personalized program, mm -hmm. then there are doctors like Dr. Joel Forum or Dr. Dean Ornish. Now this Dr. Joel is very well known because he wrote the book called Eat to Live, not Live to Eat. To Live, Eat to Live. live. And okay. also something, a, a recent book called 
fast food genocide. Okay, very alarming name. Now he's also been he and his group have been able to help any number of diabetics. In fact, he believes that we should not call diabetes a chronic progressive disease, but rather something that can be reversed. Okay. He too advocates, like me, a lot of nutritional supplements and a vegan diet. If you go to Dr. Ornish, he says lacto ovo vegetarian because he too loves yogurt like we do. Ovo, white of egg is allowed, which is fair enough, and vegetarian. And there, I'm sure there are many diets like this. You can Google and find out. And if after your study, you feel like changing, this is called medical nutrition therapy. If you feel like changing to this, get back to your doctor, discuss with them, and then make the change, okay? Don't just start being your own doctor. That's important, all right? Now, don't we have medicines that can do this, you know, work on insulin resistance, improve it? Yes, nowadays we do have drugs called insulin sensitizers, but then many of them make you put on weight and retain water and and the general consensus is that food and food supplements are any day better than drugs when it comes to insulin resistance. Okay. So, yes, address your diet and supplements issue. What else should you do? Exercise. All right. And I always recommend dancing and gardening. Why gardening? Okay. Now, when it comes to foods, I'll give you a mnemonic to remember. It's called God bless you and me. G for greens. Grow your own spinach, asparagus, kale, cabbage, lettuce, broccoli, what have you. O for onions. Onions are rich in fiber. Okay, help you lose weight. And they are rich in chromium too, which is important for type 2 diabetes. And another O would be oatmeal. Again, rich in fiber. Good for insulin resistance. Okay, another O would be olive oil, written omega-3 fatty acids. So G-O-D, D is for drumstick. Mind you, drumstick doesn't mean chicken wing. Okay, in India, drumstick means the horse radish tree. The horse it's fancy radish name tree? Is, yeah, it's fancy name is Moringa olifer, Moringa. And you can grow it in the USA. It's a miracle tree, it's leaves, are so good for insulin resistance. They're good for the liver. You, you remember I had mentioned in part one about non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. It's yes. good for that. It helps slow down kidney changes, good for the eyes, good for the brain, good for literally everything. Moringa. Okay. That's the drumstick. So G-O-D. Now bless you. B for beans, berries, and bananas. Now beans, red beans, black beans, brown beans, green beans, all colors, very, very useful. They have protein as well. The lentils have protein as well. Now, how to use the beans? First, soak them overnight so that you can soften them. Then you can steam them. This is what I do. And steam them maybe with a little bit of salt, add pepper to taste, grated carrots, squeeze lemon. Okay, it's a very nice way to have your beans. Okay. Right? Berries, blueberries, cranberries, strawberries, all good for diabetes. Okay, just a handful. And uh, bananas. There was a time when we felt, oh, bananas, aren't they rich in starch and should we avoid that? No. They're also rich in fiber. They're also very friendly to your gut bacteria. You know, our living allies. Okay. So oh, a small banana or medium banana, one a day is fine. In fact, if you add a little yogurt to it, even better. So for B, for the B and bless you. Ellie, lemon, my favorite, okay? Especially the rind is very rich in flavonoids. Excellent for insulin resistance, for upping your immunity, all right? So okay. B, Ellie, okay. S, for seeds, watermelon seeds, pumpkin seeds, all the nuts, they're all seeds. And you don't need large quantities, just maybe a little handful, okay? You can include peanuts also in the seed, right? There's an important supplement called resveratrol. It's famous because the wine industry supports it. It's there in red wine. 
but it's equally present in peanuts. My husband is happy to have a few peanuts every day. Okay, fine. So where, where did we reach? Okay, uh, B, L, E, seeds and sweet potato. There are many people who say, oh, sweet potato, surely not good for diabetes. No, it's good for diabetes. It's rich in fiber, makes you feel full, easy to grow, helps you lose weight because it promotes adiponectin, which I mentioned earlier. And uh, my, my nephew in Memphis said, grows it and he's just found out its leaves are very good too, edible. They're rich in antioxidants. Okay, so God bless and you. Now, why is an important thing? It's called yacon tuba. Now, yacon grows in South America, in the Andes areas, but it can be grown in southern parts of the USA. Needs about six months of sunshine, which I think many of the southern states have. So that's homework for you. Find out about yacon tuba. Because when you eat that, nothing is absorbed, but you feel quite nice and full, and it's good for your gut bacteria. There's also a natural sweetener called yacon syrup, which you can use because diabetics need a sweetener, right? Right. So why, for, in, uh, for, why it would be yacon, yes. Then you and me, so A for apples and avocado. Apple is an excellent fruit for diabetics. One apple a day will surely keep your diabetologist away. Okay, Granny Smith, if you want a not so sweet apple. All right, avocado. Again, your good fats increase, your bad fats come down. Rich, it's rich in fiber. It also promotes adiponectin, helps you lose weight. Okay, and you can use it instead of butter or margarine. You know, if you're making your sandwiches. Okay. So God bless you and me. M is for mushroom. Again, wonderful for diabetics because rich in fiber, no calories virtually. All right. So if you remember, God bless you and me. You God know what are the foods that foods you. that you can eat. Okay. 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 And I want you to take up gardening because you know it is, you feel happy. You're growing something. You can grow all these things that you need. So even if you don't have a big supermarket near you, where you live, and you have only these convenience stores, you'll be self-reliant. Grow what you need. And it's a challenge. Take up the challenge. Grow your moringa. Grow your yacon tuber, grow your sweet potatoes, right? And your kale. And uh, any other exercise? Yes, as I said, dancing, right? Okay. Positive mental attitude, very important. To get rid of negatives, I would recommend meditation. Meditation, nothing, just sit, close your eyes and focus on the breath. Breathe slowly in and out. You feel very relaxed. You must also cultivate positive attitude. Positive attitude would be believe in positive, the power of positive expectation. Mm -hmm. Okay. I used to write, thank you, God. I don't know how, but say Shadri is fasting blood sugar is 80 and postprandial is 120. And it would happen like that. Okay. Try it out. Nothing to lose. No side effects. Okay. All right. Then can diabetics have sweeteners? Yes. I would recommend natural ones like stevia. Yacon uh, syrup is there again, okay? And uh, can they have any desserts? Sure. They can have dark chocolate. I have a list out here. They can have, um, yeah, apple pie, baked apple. And if you have stony fruits like, uh, you know, pears, you can uh, grill them, okay? And um, banana smoothies, fruit salad with yogurt, and chocolate cake, you use peanut butter and you can use the yacon syrup as a sweetener. Corn syrup? Okay. Now, can diabetics snack? Yes, they can. Popcorn is okay. Mushrooms are okay. And if you can, you know, steam chickpeas and then uh, up, over, soak, soak them overnight, then steam them. Okay. Great carrot, add lemon, I usually, you know, dash of pepper and maybe even cottage cheese, nice snack. Mushrooms, yes. Sweet potato between two slices of brown bread, that would be fine. And uh, you can have, uh, you know, sweet potato baked or even as a cake anyway, cucumber slices, sliced apples and peanut butter, 
white of egg omelets. Don't use the yolk. Just white of egg and then maybe, you know, a little bit of yogurt, onions, tomatoes. You can make a white of egg omelet. So these okay. snacks you can have. All right. If you want to reduce your craving for sweets, there's something called Gymnema. G-Y-M-N-E-M-A. Gymnema Sylvester. Look it up. Okay. Right. So I think I've been racing through trying to keep up to the time. Now, yes, Brenda, if you have any questions, shoot. Yes, Dr. Shishadri, our, our time is short. I hate this only 30 minutes because I know it's so much you have to tell us um, to give us all of this great knowledge, but our time is short. I want to thank you very much for all of this scientific great information. And like we said, you remember, God bless you and me for the types of food that Dr. Shishadri recommended for us. And always remember, check with your doctor first before you make any drastic change. Thank you. That's important. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Shishadri, as always. Good night. Thank you. Good night. God bless. God bless you.